time to farm any news is 10 Sura videos. I've been getting a lot of recommendations, a lot of requests. There's been very helpful community members that's even gone to compile a list of things that I can watch. Thank you, Night Slayer Daybreak. We have like 12 videos in chronological order, things I need to watch. This isn't really like episode cut content, but more like the lore, the world building, the things in this show that the anime doesn't straight up tell you. So I think these are going to be pretty fun to watch. Let's see what Mr. Andy News has to say. Anyways, this one's called How Magic Works. That time I reincarnated as a slime has one of the most complex magic systems I've ever come across. Okay. There's so many different intertwining elements that change depending on the context of the situation. All I know in this show is that there's these things called magicules, and I think only monsters have access to magicules, and magicules are basically like kind of like little beads of mana around. I'm not really sure. There's like that, then there's also like spirit stuff like Hinata versus Rimuru right Hinata was like using some spell shit uh, sorry spirit stuff right I remember that and what other stuff is there oh, I, there's probably a lot more that I don't know of everything from the type of magic being cast all the way to the race of the person or monster casting it affects the way a certain magical particle is handled from beginning to end okay it's a very meticulously designed piece of fantasy that just barely scratches the surface of Tensida's power system as a whole Something you're gonna need to understand for the next video, which covers a certain main character. How strong is Rimuru? So let's take a look at how exactly this magic system and its unique concept of magic heals actually works. Let's get it. Add time. But first, Add time. this video is sponsored by Devil Book. Y'all know what to do. Use the discount code and in use for your first 10 pull in Raid Shadow Legends and back to the regular content. New mobile game to play, then I highly recommend using the link in the description to download Devil Book. Y'all him, y'all heard be him. able to unlock a selective- Jesus, okay, 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 okay. Now, let's get back to the video. In this world of dragons, demons, and slimes, there exists two main energies in- That's crazy that he spoiled Diablo right here. In this world of dragons- When was this posted? Two years ago. Diablo... No, he should have been out two years ago. He, he, he is out two years ago. That's when season two I was, yeah. In Demons and Slimes, there exists two main energies in which magic holds influence over. Okay. There's physical energy that deals with the manipulation of already existing physical elements. Physical elements. I'm gonna assume wind, water, fire, earth, or some stuff like that? Then magical energy that allows for the manipulation of the laws of the world. While both do possess their own unique... Physical elements and the laws of the world. Physical versus magical. Magical is laws of the world. Okay. Properties and characteristics. The line between them often gets blurred when looking at magic as this all-encompassing topic. Reason being that magical energy can often be used to recreate physical energy. Like Benimaru's health. Magical energy can recreate physical energy. Magical energy which touches upon the laws of the universe can recreate these elemental magic which is called physical magic okay player can reproduce the physical phenomenon of fire what's important to note, though is that it's not the same thing as fire because this fire was created from magical energy it what doesn't kind of fire is the same thing? properties as a fire that exists naturally through physical energy what it's an important distinction that changes the way certain spells and skills react with different races of people and monsters but before we can get more into why that distinction even matters we first need to understand the foundation of magic. Let's go, magicules. So that means taking a closer look at the special particles of energy that exist all throughout the world. Magicules. The very thing that makes Tensida's magic system what it is. The magicule. Yeah, there it While is. While the magicule is essentially this world's version of mana. To simply refer to it as the fuel that supplies magical power would definitely be an understatement. I mean, they're pretty much the core behind all magical and demonic life. <laughs> So, Arise, the monsters, Diablo. including Rimuru himself, are creatures born directly from the magic hills in the air. The rest are simply... So Diablo was born from the magic in the air. I don't know. This is the imagery that he's using right now, right? This is the scene where, you know, Rimuru, you know, it was like uh, 20,000 people, Megiddo, tired, summon, you know, demons. And demons were just summoned through magic hills in the air, along with like a thing on the ground. I don't know. They're pretty much the core behind all magic. This scene is still so fucking funny to me, cause exactly, look at Ranga's face, right? Cause it looks, you can't even see his eyes, and it looks like he has like a sleeping eye mask on, he's just so happy. ...and demonic life. So, many monsters, including Rimuru himself, are creatures born directly from the magic hills in the air. How was Rimuru born, though? Well, he got 
reincarnated as a slime. But the word of the world was kind of talking to him. And he just kind of manifested as a slime. Never really questioned why a slime. Why specifically a slime in Veldra's lair? What is up with that? That might be some endgame shit. Could be just fucking random. It is Veldra's magicals, yes. But like, why a slime of all things? That's what I don't understand. The word of the world was kind of talking about how different things like, you know, how Rimuda was like, you know, he wasn't really Rimuda back then, right? But uh, he was kind of like, oh, I'm going to be more, I don't want to be a virgin anymore. I'm going to be more, you know, not hostile, but more aggro to girls. And it's like, okay, predator, you know, errand. You know, heat resistance, you know, pain resistance, blah, blah, blah. And then somehow this all just became a slime. But he didn't wish that he wanted to be a slime. He just had a bunch of different things and he got a different bunch of skills and, you know, different resistance and stuff. But wonder why specifically a slime? The rest are simply animals or humans who have mutated into existences that are based on magicules, typically by being exposed to high concentrations of it. It's for this reason that monsters in this world aren't classified the same way we would expect them to be. A body that doesn't bleed. Good point. Ah, uh, I see, I see, I see. And then the word of the world was like, gotcha. You don't want a body that bleeds? Here's a slime. Gotcha. That makes a lot more sense. It's for this reason that monsters in this world aren't classified the same way we would expect them to be. To call something a monster here would actually be to refer to any species whose constitution is primarily magicule. Anything magicule based is monster. Humans don't really work with magicules, right? That's why humans kind of use like, um, I don't know what they use actually. Well, Hinata was using a spirit magic, right? She had like talismans and shit. She doesn't really directly use magicules, right? What this means is that their bodies are composed more of magicules than they are physical matter. And the more magicules their bodies possess, the stronger they are as a monster. Okay. In fact, the ranking of a monster is determined almost- Whoa, Fedisbas is ass ass. Ass. Fedisbas ass. So basically, F-E-D-C-B-A. And then special A, and then S, and then special S? What is the SP here? Solely by their capacity for it. That's why a Calamity class monster like Kodabidus was given a special A rank. Wait, excuse, excuse me? Their capacity for it. What do you say? That's why a Calamity class monster like Kodabidus was... Kodabidus. That is, that's crazy, dude. Kodabidus is one of the craziest pronunciations of Kodabidus I've ever heard. My, I, listen, the, the pronunciation of things in anime... It, it, I, I often just, you know, refer to whatever the anime characters are saying, right? If they say Mao Midim, then I'm gonna call, you know, Milim Midim, right? They call it Kari Buddhist, I'm gonna call it Kari Buddhist. Bro call that Calabrius. Almost solely by their capacity for it. That's why a Calamity class monster like Kodabidus was- That's crazy, any news? As a creature born directly <laughs> from Veldora's magicules, its capacity for them was said to rival that of a demon lord. So it makes sense that existences similar to that would be at the top of the tier list. Okay. Now, with all that said, you should have a general idea of how magicules work as the foundation for all these magical and demonic beings. As for why- So let's review this. So in the world of slime, you have physical, which is uh, uh, the element, fire, wind, earth, water stuff, like that kind of magic. Sorry, that, that, you have physical element. And then you have the, the, the magic, which is laws of the universe, right? And then you can also recreate with the laws of the universe. You know, using magic, you can create new physical things. Hellflare is a direct example. Fire is not the same as, you know, magic created physical fire. And on top of that, the foundation of everything is magicules. The more you have, obviously, the stronger you are. It's a tier list. And all monsters are pretty much associated, pretty much like manifested with magicules. So we have that so far. Okay. It's a determining factor of power, though. Well, that's mainly because of its unique properties. You see, magicules are the very form of energy that allows for the establishment of skills and casting of magic. Because these magicule particles can affect the physical world around them, they okay. can also be manipulated in a way that allows the person or monster possessing Ramen. them to do the same. They become this medium that grants the ability to influence the laws of reality. And that's what's known as magic. So, to summarize it in a way that Rimuru himself once said, Magic is the process of picturing something, then creating it in real life. 
creating it by using that said magic, which is the laws of the universe, and creating something which is the physical properties that, again, we just make with the magic. It's the concept of projecting an idea into reality. Okay, okay. That said, there's quite a bit more to the casting of it than simply having the right amount of magicules. The caster also needs to possess a sufficient level of control over them, as well as be knowledgeable in exactly what they're trying to do with them. So you can't just have a lot of magicules. You obviously need to know how to control said magicules and what to do with this. So this is where kind of like technique and uh, yeah, technique would come in. It's somewhat similar to the way it works in Mushoku Tensei. Oh, Roxy! Since magic requires the user's imagination in order to bring their ideas into reality. It also requires them to have an understanding of the processor method that will allow it to happen. Take a simple elemental spell like Waterblade, for example. Before this developed into a skill that Rimuru could cast automatically, he first had to learn how to cast it as magic. He hmm. needed to practice creating a mental image that would manipulate the magicules into this blade-like projectile. I, I, I thought he was just fucking spitting water, and it just became a blade. I never really thought about this, right? When you watch episode 1, you, when you were in Veldro's cave and Rimuru was going around, he's just shooting blades, I'm like, oh. He just sucked up water, and he spat it out, and it became a blade. Cool. But it's like, no. He uses these magicules to then create this physical property of the water, and then he uses the mental image processing to form said water into a blade. It's like, what the fuck? So what he did was he decided to envision the cylinder of a car engine. That way he could accurately manipulate the pressure, volume, and subsequent force of the water being out. <laughs> what? He imagined a car engine for the... I mean, this is straight up... I mean, this is from Auto Tech Labs, but... I didn't realize he was putting this much fucking thought into just a water blade. That's the type of mental image that's required to cast magic. And while it is normally... And here's another thing! Here's another thing! Eren... Well, no, Ed Eden is an elf. I was going to say, how the fuck, you know, are these people using magic? So, because, like, you know, where is Eden from, right? That village there. They're, they're all elves, and elves are also considered monster. They're called monsters, are they? Anyone that's not human is basically a monster, right? I'm not really sure. Like, dwarves and elves. There are different species of humanoids. They're humanoids, right? But those Majin... I forgot the existence of Majin, which are basically just like a blanket term for any being that can use magic, but demi-humans, yeah, Majin, but that's another good thing too. Ramen is human, right? He a mage. Well, is he really? Because, okay, this is, spo this is spoiled territory. I don't want the answers, but Razen is the, it, the body doesn't matter. He keeps taking over human bodies, but the soul, you know. The soul, who knows what the origin soul is from. It could have been a monster originally that's been implanted into other bodies, right? So don't spoil me on that, but yeah, the more I think about this, it's like, what the fuck is going on? And while it is normally a lot more difficult to do for a lot of the more complex spells, not all types of magic require the mage to have an understanding of science like how the elemental type does. The process to realize the caster's vision into reality actually differs depending on the type of magic that's being cast. Okay. Of which there are four main categories. Elemental, spiritual magic, summoning magic, and holy. Holy has its own fucking category? That's some bullshit, bro. What in the fu Holy magic? Uh, disintegrate was holy magic? I forget, but holy shit. That's, that's, that's funny how there's just a single category towards that's holy magic. As we know. The elemental type's relation to the physical elements and... Yeah, we already talked about this. Yes. ...requires an understanding of the world and the laws that govern it. So, the caster will either utilize the magic kills within themselves or draw from the magic kills within the surrounding area that... Within themselves or surrounding area. Okay. Well, is there some kind of, like, restriction? Or, like, how hard is it to, like, utilize magic kills in the surrounding area? Sounds like if it's from within, it's just, like, innate talent, right? ...manipulate them via the mental image process I described earlier. Spirit magic works a little bit different from that. Okay. It's a form of magic that doesn't quite rely on magicules the same way elemental magic does. Mm -hmm. Instead, it relies on the establishment of a contract between spirit and caster. Oh, remember her? I remember her. Even this girl was so, like, 
Uh, the eyes are different, but like this greater spirit, right? Remember her? She kind of, she didn't really look like Shizu or Chloe, but it's just a black hair. It's just a long black hair girl, right? ...of a contract between spirit and caster. Once that contract has been formed, the mage can now perform magic by using Ifrit. the contracted spirit as their medium. Yo. So everything from... Yo, okay, so that's what Shizu was kind of doing, right? Contract with Ifri has been formed, and the, the whatever magic, you know, that you use there is spirit magic because of the contract. We haven't seen Chloe really fight yet, huh? We have not seen Chloe fight after she got a contract with that. It was called the was it called the Greater Spirit? I forget the exact terminology, but I do want to see these kids fight something, bro. Let's go. So everything from the moment the spell's initiated all the way to the instant it's finally cast is handled by the spirit alone. It sounds like. So you don't have to know about like like uh, elemental magic. You need to understand like the laws of the world and do image training and stuff like that, and then use your own magic tools to then you know use that shit. But then spirit magic as contract. All right, spirit, do your thing. Spirit, do your thing. It's that sounds that sounds pretty convenient. It sounds pretty easy. Makes it so that magic tools and incantations aren't even needed anymore. Incantationless. Spirit magic fucking cracked. But you still need a contract. Well, at least not from the caster because the spirit is the one actually performing the magic. All the responsibility that comes with it gets passed on to them, making it one of the more valuable types of magic. So convenient, combat. so easy. That said, there are a couple limiting factors that make spirit magic a bit less for- Why does she have this on? She, this, this greater, she, she looked like she had a fucking wedding gown, bro. Right? Am I the only one that thinks this looks like a bridal dress or some shit? Makes spirit magic a bit less- Straight up! Than elemental magic. The first is that the spells available to the mage are dependent on the type of spirit they're contracted with. Okay, so even though it's very convenient to let the spirit use, you know, their own, you know, whatever they're using to use the magic, we are still at a disadvantage compared to the traditional element of magic because we're dependent on that spirit and the type of spirit they are. If we can only use fire, even though it's pretty OP, it's only fire. So they can't go make a contract with Ifrit then expect to be able to use Icicle Lance. Now, can we make multiple contracts with spirits? Is that possible? I feel like a restriction to a single spirit is very limited, but why don't you have four separate fucking greater spirits? Like you have Ifrit and you have like whatever the water spirit is and earth spirit and fucking, you know. Uh, wind spirit. You got you're, you're, you got all the fucking elements, and, you, and you're the fucking avatar or some shit. I don't know. They can only use the spells and skills that Ifrit himself can use. The second is that the overall power of the magic is determined by the spirit's innate ability. Okay, so these spirits are basically Pokemon. Think of it like this: you're a Pokemon trainer. You throw out a fucking spirit out there. The spirit has the move set. And, this, and, and then the skills are also kind of dependent on how strong that spirit already is. Now, I, want, I don't know if you can level the spirits up, but the spirit shit, it just sounds like fucking Pokemon. And you're just kind of there, just like, all right, go do your thing. If the spirit they're contracted with has quite a large supply of magic kills, then their spells and skills will be much more effective over a... Multiple spirits here, but doesn't really mean that she has contract with every one of them. Does she? I don't know. Spirit that has less. It's a concept that relates back to how monsters are ranked based on their capacity for magic kills. Usually, spirits who possess more are stronger and subsequently ranked higher. But anyway, the next type of magic is actually Holy very magic. similar to spirit magic. It involves a pact with a higher power just like before. Who did Hinata make a pact with? Does it make sense that it's Luminous, but Luminous would give you holy magic? Is it the angels? Did they all fucking make a contract with the angels to get holy power? And is that why we're the angels bitch right now? I don't know. Because like, the most recent episode in Tensor Rep Season 3, Episode 3 or something, right? Luminous is shit talk Episode 2 or something. Luminous is shit talking. Shit talking these flying fucking bugs, right? Holy magic. Who did you make a pact with? The only difference is that the higher power you're making a pact with is pretty much God. God? Well, they're God. Bald! I can't really see. Their god. Oh! Shuna, 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 Shuna! Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We know this. We know this. Shuna. Remember? Shuna was using holy magic in season two at the end. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, 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 you're straight up Majin. You're Kijin. What the fuck? A holy magic? And then it's like, wait. It's about... 
if you have faith towards a higher being known as God. And it's like, God? The fuck do we worship? And it's like, oh, their god is Rimuru. That's why she can believe and use holy magic. Therefore, Hinata believes in Luminous? It has to be, right? It's gotta be? Say much more without getting into spoilers, but it is a type of magic that goes by the name of holy magic. And it functions pretty much the same way that spirit magic does. You see, the pact with this godlike being makes it so that part of their god's power becomes their own. Hmm? And since the magic is cast through them... Really? So Shuna kind of has a bit of Rimuru's magic now? That's what, you know, he said, right? It's so that part of their god's power becomes their own. Part of their god's power becomes their own. So it's like Shuna's like tapping into Rimuru's powers? And since the magic is cast through them, magicules once again aren't a necessary part of the process. Cool. What is, though, is it about faith in the god they've chosen to worship? So long as that faith exists and the right knowledge and enough time is given, very that faith exists. And and what and what and what, what what is it? So long as that faith exists and the right knowledge and enough time is given, enough time. I wonder why. But this is an interesting. This is a, this is a very interesting thing, right? As long as the faith exists, and there's been kind of talks about how you know Illuminism is there, but there's also the non-believers and. You know, religious people sometimes, they open their third eye and they realize that, shit, maybe this is a fucking lie, a hoax, and they start become, they, they lose the faith. So, would Hinata ever lose faith in whatever god she, you know, trusted and then loses her holy powers, right? I'm trying to think, like, how this is going to work in the future of all these, you know, people with holy magic. And if their faith in their god, I don't know, some, some, some shit happens, it's a huge reveal, and they realize that, oh my god, this is all a fucking lie. We don't trust this god anymore. And then the, the, the pact is done, they can no longer use holy magic. Sounds like a pretty interesting thing that could happen, but I don't know. I'm just, just throwing guesses. Very powerful spells can be cast via holy magic. Now, the final main school of magic Cromwell. is summoning magic. A type that we've seen. We know summoning magic as a shitload of people are like on standby for like weeks or a month or something, right? Like 30 dudes just trying to fucking summon one thing and usually they fail and summoning is like looked down upon a lot in this world. Uh, the church seems to be doing it kind of hidden, right? And the people that are summoned also have a shorter lifespan like the kids. I think that's what I remember. Been used numerous times throughout the anime. Yeah, this is the easy kind of magic. You're right. Suggests, You're right. <laughs> this form of magic involves the process of summoning a living being from another plane of reality, Diablo. typically a spirit or a demon. It's very rare that summoning magic ever be used to summon an otherworld. Fuck these idiots. Regardless of what it is that's being summoned, though, the process itself almost always involves a mass accumulation. Yo, yo, what the fuck is underneath this mask for Beretta? Who is this girl? Because we kind of skipped over this episode when we were doing a rewatch of season one, but now that I remember, what is it? Have we ever seen this fake girl's face? Hold the fuck up. We have seen her face, huh? Oh, hold the fuck up. Hold the, hold the fuck up. I'm just trying to realize that she's not just a fucking doll, bro. Like, what? Hmm. 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 She looks kind of good. The process itself hmm. almost always involves a mass accumulation of magicules and the establishment of a contract. But the exact specifics as to what is required is dependent on whether it's a spirit, demon, or otherworlder. Okay. A topic that isn't really worth delving into right now. So that's every main type. Pretty much, so summoning three categories, right? You got the fucking demons or spirits, or you know, you're, you fucking summon people from Japan. Why is it always from Japan? Because this is anime. Just makes sense. Type of magic in the world of Tensida. Of course, there's the other more obscure types like illusion or nuclear, but- What the fuck is all this? Illusion, nuclear, engraving, physics, mental. Bro, this is... There's, there's five more categories, bro. What, what's going on here? Those are things we'll find out more about as the story progresses. All right. What's worth mentioning right now is that the type of mage you are is determined by the type of magic you're proficient with. So if you ever see any of these whoa, titles... Whoa, 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 whoa. ...is determined by the type of... You have sorcerer, which is the element that we kind of all familiar with. Magic you're proficient with. There's a shaman who deals with spirit magic. So you could say that... Uh, well, I don't know who specializes in just spirit magic. Uh, Hinata only uses spirit magic one time. Does, what, is, what does Traini use? Toraini uses dryad magic? I don't fucking know. But any, anyway, someone that only uses spirit or that specializes in it. Shaman. So if you ever see. Enchanter engraving. Is, <laughs> the Conqueror of Flames is now the Shaman of Flames? The Flame Shaman? 
I like the word conqueror more. Enchanter is engraving, and we don't really know what engraving means, but in terms of the term generic engraving in gaming context, it's like, you know, you engrave something. It's like a slot, some kind of socket. Enchanting sounds like if you have a sword, and you put like these gems, sockets in, you're engraving it, and you made the thing stronger, therefore you are an enchanter, right? See any of these titles used to refer Summoner. <laughs> I, I, gee, I wonder what summoner means, Gachiji. Refer to someone in the anime, then. Holy Knight. Or is this Holy Magic? Got it. Got it. You'll be able to know right away exactly. Illusion? Maya? M M Maya? What? what it, people that specializes in illusion magic are just called Maya. Um. Maya sounds like a fucking first name of a girl, but interesting. Be careful of girls that's named Maya, I guess. Exactly what type of magic they're capable of. Wizard. Any three classes. And Interesting how there's an actual difference in the semantics of sorcerer and wizard. Because I thought that just like the British people, you know, refer to wizards as sorcerers. And people here are just using the term wizard. But actually, sorcerer is like very limited. While wizard is kind of all-encompassing any three classes. There's more flexibility. Anyway, now that you're familiar with the fundamentals of magic... The next thing to know is that pretty much anyone can use it. All it takes is a sufficient number of magicules, knowledge in exactly what they're trying to do, and a whole lot of practice. And like, you don't even need to have innate magicules. If there's magicules all around you, you could like borrow the atmospheric magicules. I don't even know how that would work, right? Because it sounds like he's saying anyone can use it. And he does say, you know, magicules are foundation, but magicules also kind of exist, you know, in the world too, outside your body. And as long as you have the knowledge of how to use that, then you should be able to just use magic. While the latter two conditions aren't exactly very difficult to meet, the former is the main reason why we usually only ever see Majin or monsters casting magic. Their innate ability to store magicules within themselves makes them much more suited to magic than any human. Humans, on the other hand, are born without any internal capacity whatsoever. Mm, no which magicules. Which would initially make you think that magic is something they're incapable of. But... but that's actually not entirely true. While it does make learning magic a lot more difficult, the concept of external magical handling is what allows it to be possible. Here we go. External magical handling, right? Even if you don't have magical reserves in your body, if it's around in your environment, how do you use it? So if internal handling is the process of using magicules within oneself, then the external variant would be the process of using magicules from the surrounding area. Any mage who doesn't have a magical reserve of their own would instead have to rely on magicules in the environment or whatever. Is that what's happening here? Eden? staff the thing it, it's glowing right so it looks like Eden just like harvested all the magicules into this uh, gem whatever this portion of the staff is and then that's external magical gathering and then she's using you know icicle beams off of that icicle lance would instead have to rely on magicules in the environment or I whatever think so? magic item they have that's used to store them yeah okay it's the storing it there the magic casting process well that pretty much remains the same Really, the only thing that's changed is the source from which the magicules come from. Now, despite the majority of what we see in the anime being magic cast via internal magicules, it's actually more- How the fuck did this work, actually? No, this is spirit magic, right? I was like, hold up. Hinata was like, he, man in news was talking about using external magic, but in this battle, Hinata versus Rimuru, there was an anti-magic barrier implying that there was no magicules anywhere here, right? For the rest of the magic casting process, well, that pretty much remains the same. Really, the only thing that's changed is the source from which the magicules come from. Now, despite the majority of what we see in the anime being magic cast via internal magicules, it's actually more common for mages to use external magicules. Really? I mean, not every country in the world is populated by a majority of Majins who possess high internal capacities for it. Most mages actually possess little to Razen. Especially if we're talking Bald. about human mages. One of the reasons why this is, is because magicules are actually very toxic to most natural life forms. Here we go. Uh, I forget where in the story this got brought up, but I do remember. It's like magical toxicity, right? The more magicules you have, like, you kind of get like, it's, 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 you're just getting like water poisoning. You're drinking way too much water. You're getting water poisoning. What's going on? Any existence that isn't based on magical energy like how a monster is, is highly susceptible to a phenomenon known as magical poisoning. So, only humans? Hold up. Hold up, hold up. These are actually very toxic to most natural life forms. 
any existence that isn't based on magical energy like how a monster basically just humans right they're very susceptible to magic uh, toxicity there is is highly susceptible to a phenomenon known as magical poison gotcha so should a person with little tolerance for magicals walk into a place with a high concentration of it then it's very likely that the resulting toxic effects could kill them that's why no one could approach Veldoro's domain until Rimuru was born. And that's kind of the lie that we were using, you know. It was a lie how the family's people, you know, as soon as they got near Veldora, right? The storm terror released, the magic killed enough were just basically just killing people. Gotcha, gotcha. There wasn't any monster or human that could withstand the high concentration of magic kills surrounding him. Another example of this would be this scene here. Rimuru's unconscious leakage of what was pretty much his true aura was so oh. rich in magicules that even a Majin like Benimaru couldn't withstand it. Really? That said, there are situations where an animal or a human can build up a tolerance, an innate resistance that makes magicules a little less toxic to them. But it's when that happens that they evolve or mutate into something different. And that's a whole nother topic that relates more to races than it does to magic. And I'm sure there's so, a video on instead that. Instead of getting into that, let's finish things off with how magic is implemented in the anime. Okay. Or to put it more accurately, how it's been bypassed in the anime. <laughs> the reason we hardly ever it. see Rimuru or any of his followers cast magic the way I've described is because they rarely, if ever, are actually casting magic. Most of the time they're using what's known as skills. Oh boy, okay. So, magic and skills, there is a difference. Intrinsic abilities etched into their soul that requires Unique skill, intrinsic abilities etched into their souls. Zero conscious effort to perform. They're pretty much spells that require no practice, mental image, or knowledge. Just these things that someone inherently knows how to do. It's just like a hotkey. You just click on it, it just works, right? These skills, right? You just say, Bilzebub. Fucking, uh, you know, uh, devour before, right? It, there's, there's a lot of these skills that you just fucking know because it's etched into your soul. You, cl you click a fucking hotkey, it's already macroed. You click number two, boom, Bilzebub. So, when it comes to magic, Rimuru and the others are essentially cheating. Gluttony. Unless they're trying to cast a spell that they're unfamiliar with, they basically get to bypass the entire process with their skills. OP. It's one of the aspects that makes them so much more overpowered than others. Now, how do you gain a skill? Like, um, Benimaru spams Health Flare. Let's say he's not used to using water magic. So now he's actually casting magic with the elemental process that we're talking about. But can you then make that into your skill later? It's race dependent or by will. You can evolve and kind of get that. Interesting. Interesting. So it does seem like the goal is to make all these magic your skill. You, you, you have these magic and you want to make them into macros. You want to have a nice fucking hotkey from 1 to 9, 0 to 9, so you can just press the fucking number. No thought process, no incantation. You press, it just fucking works because it's a skill. Others. This, however, is just a very brief overview. Skills are a much more complex topic that requires a video of its own. Let's get well, that one too. And plenty other magical adjacent topics. Naming rate. Oh my god. Oh, there's so many fucking topics, Complex bro. Complex topic that requires a video of its own. Well, that and plenty other. We know about naming races. The what do you mean? The body is a top. What? The body is also the. You got what? Naming is important because monsters evolve through the names. Races is obviously just important, but the body, like your body type. Okay. Topics that. Summoning, as we kind of already talked about that a bit. Definitely need Arts. Uh, I don't know this. Martial arts? I don't think I know this. I think it's related to fucking the, the, the holy people, the Hinata stuff. You guys were saying Hinata uses arts, but more related to humans, right? Arts is more about uh, humans. Need explaining. Rank? Oh, we, we, I love tier lists like ranks, right? Okay, good. Well. Titles. Titles are important. Like the Conqueror of Flames, Shizu. I thought these were just like, just to hype people up, but okay, these titles are kind of important too. For now though, I think I've covered everything that needs to be said about the fundamentals and its bearing over magic. It's definitely one of the- Yeah, Demon Lord, exactly. Mao is uh, it's, it's exactly a title, right? Exactly, exactly. Maybe it's like a, you put a title on, it's like a, it's like a passive boost or some shit, extra stats, I don't know. The more complex systems that I've had to look into. So hopefully I didn't make too many mistakes in the process. 
if you're someone who's an expert on all things Tensida, then That's I'd not be me. happy to have you join my Discord so you can help give some input into future videos like these. The link to that will be down in the description. But Is that it? Yeah, if you like this video and you want to see more, then be sure- Y'all know what to do. Please go like Mr. Annie News' channel. Sorry, video. Sub to his channel if you like him. He's giving us such a good breakdown. This is a 14-minute video, which was, well, technically this is like a fucking 35-minute video now because I'm just yapping. But a 14-minute video of him just summarizing this stuff. This is very concise. This is very good. And the craziest thing is there's so much more. And I, and I told you, there's so many of these anime news videos. Not even cut content, but just like light novel stuff like this, right? Just things fundamental, like crucial to the story. That just kind of gets skipped in the anime that I want to watch. So this is pretty educational. This is pretty good. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you did like it, let me know in the comments so that, you know, I should watch more of these or if you've got any other videos that I want to check out, okay?